everyone welcome back to my channel i have this thing that i will talk about i already cut apart the original just so i could get a head start uh since you know i have to go that away across a yard and into a shop so i am going oh uh, i don't think i need to all right i was gonna zoom out but uh, I don't think it's really necessary. Actually, it's probably not going to turn it. I can turn it. It's solid on the back. All right. So I had this box. It actually stand. It, it stood up. Uh, we're pretty sure we, by we, I mean my husband and I, we're pretty sure it was like for holding wine. It had this center divider. There's... There were little slots in it right there. This little center divider went in. It looked like it held bottles. I've had it for 15 years. Uh, I can say my husband won it at one of those silent auctions accidentally. <laughs> that was what he said. It was accidentally. He went, it was something work related. Um, a silent auction. He wrote his name down on it. He did it you know think whatever he put he thought other people might put it underneath anyways and it was an accidental win i've had it for 15 years it has been sitting around empty for 15 years and i finally just was brainstorming and i came up with a thing i came up with a thing which is obviously this is going to have to be a multi-part video series so i'll make a playlist for it because i'm pretty sure it would be a very extensive video to try to do in one shot so first things first this was the lid i already have the hardware off it had the hinges there on the back so it would flip up like so um it has this really kind of cool velvet lining in it it had a handle on it well it had the two brackets for the handle but the actual handle part i think the handle was on it when my husband brought it home but it was already kind of weak and it broke and I'm going to put a new handle on my lid. But this is the big, big thing here because it had been all in one piece. I haven't it had nails in it. You can see it's just particle board, whatever, whatever, particle board. And I decided to just pull it apart. I got to get the pokies out of there and this is what I'm at now this was how it had originally been well you know all one piece but with a hinge and it would open and I had this little divider that slid in so you can see how it kind of was bottle shaped I do not understand in the least why there was a box to carry two bottles around in. But anyhow, so here I am. You can tell, I mean, when I said I had just cut it, I hadn't even bothered cleaning off all the sawdust yet. You can see my scribbles because I'm going to refinish it anyhow. This, were, this was so that I could make a better visual for myself. You can see now um, when it had been together, the parts that I was keeping together, I used a Sharpie on. That's what all that is. My brainstormy marks. So this is going to be like the cabinet base. It's going to be kind of hard to do. I'll have to try to, I'll try to uh, come up with a better angle on a camera for a camera with a camera so that I when I'm working with it standing up you'll still be able to see but not there yet anyways it'll stand up like this these were actually going to become doors these are my thinking this is my current of thinking right now and this is what started everything is dropping stuff no is an apothecary type of cabinet 
or carry case or whatever you want to call it. So it would open like this and close like this. I had thought of just leaving this together at the bottom so that it could just be used as a just storage area underneath the doors. And then I realized it wasn't very hard to do this with it because it was just nailed in. So I think I am going to, uh, I'll leave it as a big thing, but I'm going to make this also hinged on the bottom edge so that it can fold out. This will likely be repurposed into shelving or a spacer or something. It'll get repurposed and put back in in some form or another. And then the lid. The lid is going to, to stay solid, but I might, I'm thinking I will use a hinge that will fold all the way back so that it will go like this. Um, and I'll probably have compartments in it for, you know, something would be like where the dry, dry apothecary herbs, spices, uh, ground dragon bone, whatever. So then the anything that would be like in bottles or that is wet fake wet because this is a display this is not particularly going to be functional it's a uh like decoration item that's kind of what i'm headed towards right now is i have to just finish up um i'm going to kind of clean up the outside remove all of the nails that are sticking out um get rid of all that sawdust make it so that i can get a base coat of some kind of primer or gesso or something on here under you know cover this up start my process um i'm thinking it's not attached very well anymore and i think i will probably just be peeling off my velvet and saving it that's just so that i don't get any mediums on it yeah it's like i said i've had this for like 15 years i don't know how old it was before my husband accidentally won it so it's not particularly well adhered anymore yeah. Um, that'll make the painting less stressful i think so i'll clean this up and then i will come back to you and kind of talk about what i decide to use as my base coat my primer my gesso my whatever making i'll make sure that you know all of the pieces are like you know, all my seams are still strong because this right here, I really did just pull off very easily, actually. So I'll make sure everything's still attached good because they are not very fancy joints. They are, I believe they're called butt joints. No, wait, maybe they're not fancy. They're not fancy joints. I will find out the actual name of them and then probably make a note for you there. Okay, I eventually took all my pieces out and just sanded them, sanded them down a bit randomly. There is still some of the paint showing, but it is scruffed up where it is left. My door thingies, my back, and then I have this. I took a lot of different texture pastes that I had partials of so a lot of different brands and textures like sands or mats or anyways a whole bunch I added some black gesso and I just mixed it all up just just to use up a lot of different partials I had 
And I'm going to add some stenciling on them a little bit. I have a few different stencils out. I have, this is an AB Studio stencil. And then I have a few Finnebear stencils that I had been thinking of. Probably, that's not going to all be the same. I think I'm going to put a variety on. But I am just going to start with, uh, with this uh, AB Studio one on this bottom front panel. Get everything stenciled up with my little mix here. Let it dry and, and see where I want to go from there. Probably put on a nice coat of gesso over everything, but I'm not entirely certain yet. So this is just the next stage I know that I wanted to do. have my gesso on or oh, yeah most most of it is covered pretty good i didn't necessarily have to do the inside in a coat of gesso but i just i really wanted to seal up that old particle board and in all the work this was not a very thick bottom to begin with i don't even think it was as thick as that is this center divider so in between the sanding and rinsing off the sand or the sawdust, it's kind of warped. And well, I didn't like it anyhow because it was kind of flimsy. So I had I had this really rather large sheet of particle board. Like it's probably more like MDF actually than this type of particle board. It is a very dense, dense particle board. And I'm going to put it on my bottom like so, get it stuck in place and use that to reinforce, strengthen and uh, straighten that bottom back out.
my my new base is on it has it has taken a lot of that bow out of there but it's very sturdy now so my next uh oh my next uh inserts things i've been thinking about uh adding some shelves i did try to do a bit of measurements in here i have i have spaces that were left for hinges uh however much a hinge might take up and i did want to add shelves so you can see how there we go this shelf would how much space the shelf on the back would take and i have little door shelves so that when it's closed if you think about it being about so because the door fits like that or it will fit like that ish ish it has some space in between so they shouldn't hit shouldn't hit so for my doors i'm gonna try to get these together i have two little shelves for each door maybe you know i'm gonna smooth the edges or at least the front edges a little bit i have plans i i have some plans on how to get these in here and get them to stay in place i just remembered i can't really put my shelves in yet none of them because i need um my liner there we go that's what i was trying to think of i knew there was something that i was almost not thinking of very well because i don't really want to cut the liner i don't think i don't really want to cut the liner although i'm not entirely certain you know what i'm gonna move on to getting my liner ready so uh i have i have a plan for that to reinforce it you know what so that's that's what this next step is going to be i can't put my shelves in without that liner in or i can't or i'll have to cut the liner uh, maybe slip it over the shelves make some slits i will figure it out as i work on my liner i think i think i think i'll try to anyhow all right so for right now this is going to change things up because depending on how i can how i put the well actually it won't change it up that much well it might depending on how i'm going to do the liner over shelves will affect whether or not i paint my shelves first or if i paint them and then or after putting them in so We'll have to see. I'll have to see. It'll be a surprise for us all. I'll show you what I have in mind for reusing that velvet liner and kind of uh, strengthening it also. So my first step is I am going to use this fabric. It's, I don't know, medium weight, medium light weight fabric. Uh, just some kind of fabric and i'm going to use it as a backing on those velvet pieces but my first my first thing is i am using the ultra hold heat and bond on my fabric i'm going to add it to my reinforcement fabric first and then peel it up and turn it over i think i'll iron from this side not on top of the velvet and try to stick everything together hopefully hopefully stick everything together i am i am really hoping actually to get that velvet reattached and reinforced and make it a bit easier to hopefully clean up some i don't haven't really worked that out somehow i don't think a washing machine would do it any favors 
but I do want to try to clean it up some. It still, it still has sawdust on it and probably just regular dust dust and what have you. Okay, I was thinking before I start adding a final coat of paint on here, well, I'll have to add some gesso onto my reinforced bottom, but, but I was also thinking maybe of adding a little bit more texture or interest or visual, not so much texture, I guess, but decoration. I have to kind of make sure that I'm not going to have anything in the way of the opening. I also have the um, option, the possibility, optional possibility of adding it to the front of the doors or adding something to the front of the doors. But I also want to make sure that I can put latches on, a knob, maybe a knob or two, hook latch, something of that nature. I wanted apothecary and kind of, you know, old, but not necessarily, you know, horrifyingly mad scientist scary. If that makes sense. All right. So after all that, which I probably cut out by now. Anyways, after a whole bunch of playing around, I realized... I don't want a lot, I'm, and by a lot, I mean, I don't think I really want anything other than the hardware on the outside, I think. We're going to wean it now. Just going to try to wean it to get everything kind of coming together. Hopefully, hopefully, I don't have to go back and like fix any kind of oopsies or change my mind, but I probably will. So stay tuned for that for sure. I'm sure it'll happen, absolutely certain it will happen at some point in time. I will be like, oh, I guess I should have done that. And that's why this is a multi-part project and with playlists and stuff. I am, however, pretty sure that I'm just going to use up these last little Finbear Mechanicals Roman numerals. Just a little bit of extra decoration. Not a lot, a little bit and put them on the outside and I will gesso them. I think oh, I have a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. All right, now it's not pretty because I was, uh, but I wanted to make sure I had my holes in for the screw holes that will go my new handle, which will have to go on the outside before I finish up the inside and add the um, that velvet back in. And so it'll cover up the screw heads and what have you. So I do have that. And I don't want to leave the handle like this. So I think I will be mucking it up a bit. Mucking it up just a bit. Just a bit. My door shelving also is going to be needing paint put on it. I don't think I'm going to gesso it just because I don't really, I don't think I'm going to really care if it kind of looks worn on the inside, if that makes sense. Warnish. Anyways, I have parts and pieces that need painted and or adhered. And I will just use some 3D matte gel to attach these before I come in and gesso them. So I'm just going to let my numerals sit there a bit. I have, I have an image in my head. I have a color in my head, I should say, that I'm thinking for my outside. I, I can't find anything in my stash that is exactly 
what I'm picturing. So I am going to attempt to make my own mix. Speaking of, I, maybe I should use a bigger container. It's not exactly like um, I'm going to measure, so I better make sure I have enough right from the get, right? And I'm just going to use this um, Nutmeg Brown. It's a lighter brown as my base color, and then add to it until I get what I want, what I'm picturing, I hope. Okay, I did finally finish playing with the one I started, figured out exactly what I was going to do to finish it up, to, you know, get it, get it looking how I was thinking. And I'm just going to say, these are the shelves. This is the one I did yesterday. One coat, both sides. It came out exactly exactly perfect for me i kept my brush strokes all going the lawn the full length it has this really cool kind of grain look to it i think i think probably because of the mix of paints in there because of the lindy's magicals it, it came out it actually came out a lot better than i had hoped it would so i am very happy with how my shelves are but back to my case, back to, back to finishing out the outside of my case. I, after, after all of the paint had dried on that small piece and it had, you know, time to set up, this is more or less what it looked like after, after the paint had dried and there was that sprinkling of uh, Lindy's on that wet paint and this is that initial result more or less more or less the initial result you know so what I did because I was curious of how much of that Lindy's had become permanently sealed down uh, with uh with the moisture from the paint if any of it was going to be able to be reactivated I came in and I just used a little spray bottle of water and I gave my surface a spray just to see how that Lindy's might move around in the end. And so then I just worked out, moved out, moved it around, added extra water if I needed a little bit more movement. And then, if there were some areas that I thought might need a little bit of a, a lift, I just came in with a paper towel and did this. This just did this little number on it. Just like so. Could even come in and use my finger. It helps kind of spread the water thinner so that it quits running around on me. Now, it wasn't such a big deal on the flat piece because I could lay it flat. This one, I think I'm going to have to find um, something to set this up on there until the water is dry. And then I let it air dry. So that's what this is. This next step is that's what I'm going to do on the rest of my pieces, my lid and my door. They're all ready for the watering 
the watering. And I will just let that air dry. And then, well, I'll do my sides, my lid, my doors. Do some air drying. And then I will come back and tell you what I added on in the end, what I added on for that kind of yellowish matte look on there. Okay, so after all that water had dried from where I had rinsed, moved, spread out all the lindies, as a final bit to add a little bit of extra distressing, a little extra color, a little extra something to also help. I think it'll help. I haven't really tested it, but it should hopefully help hold any of the loose lindies in place still. I used some matte wax. There. I have to block out I have to block out my uh far away or it won't focus up close because autofocus is does not mean autofocus apparently. Anyhow. So that wax that's what I use and I use a little bit start it with my just rubbing it on work it around with a brush and kind of go at it like that so I'll put some there and all I did was just start adding it working it around randomly mostly randomly it's not a even coat everywhere I did try to also focus it where the Lindy's would be where the Lindy's might be a little bit looser um, and then I would come in with the brush and that just helps to get it into some of the smaller areas in the stenciling. And then I can still come in, use my finger on top of the stenciling if I need to, uh, lighten up some of the wax on top of the stenciling. So that's really all there is to it is I'm just going to finish adding the wax to my lid to my doors and to the case except for the top surface because to help to just to help anchor this because this is some kind of dried out particle board I want to add 3d matte gel to the underside of this and it don't I don't think it would stick to wax very well since it's wax maybe I will just do what I did to find my holes is I will just mark out where not to put wax, right? That should theoretically work. Theoretically, if I kind of give myself just a little bit of space, like so. There we go. So maybe I can. And just avoid these two little ovals. Maybe that is better. Anyhow. So I'm just going to finish waxing the rest of my box before before I move on. But for this first video or this first segment of the entire project, I think that this is where I am going to leave off. And then when I come back in the next video, work on assembly, uh, adding hardware any other finishing mediums maybe i'll maybe i'll finally get to adding the liner back in work on all of the decorations something like that i don't know depends on how long the next one is but by the time i get back to you guys this wax will be finished and i will be ready to move on with you uh with to the next part of the process so Thanks for watching this with me. I, I hope it comes out well for all of us. And I will see you again soon in the next video.